Welcome back. It is Friday, and you know what that means. It's time to get into the swing of things. Jason and Dara will get you caught up on all the baseball highlights from around South Dakota yesterday, starting with a thrilling walk-off win in Mitchell. Thank you, Kelly. The Mitchell Colonels, they started the year in my top five, but lost a few close ones to start their season. Then they have a 14-day break before Thursday's game against the number one Roosevelt Rough Riders, and a win against them would go a long way to beefing up their confidence. Let's see if they could do it. Remember, it was Roosevelt who eliminated Mitchell in the playoffs last year on a walk-off homer from Nick Hoekstra. Let's see if we'll have more drama coming up in this night. First inning, Roosevelt's Gus Riddell puts one into the outfield for a sack fly, scoring Austin Portner, and they're up early, 1-0. Mitchell would tie it up at one after Roosevelt walked in a run, but in the fourth, Austin Portner again. Another sacrifice fly to center field, and this time Carter Aids finds a way to get across the plate, and they get a 2-1 lead. So the low-scoring game continues. Mitchell would tie the game at two with Austin Kerr singles, ground ball to left field. Jordan Dirk scores, and you know what? He'd go extra innings. In the eighth inning, Austin Portner drives a hit to right, and guess what? Carlos Caro comes in to score the winning run. Now, I know this game was in Mitchell, but they were the home team, so they got the walk-off because this was a makeup game. Let's hear from the Riders after the win. It was your classic South Dakota spring baseball game with the wind blowing in at about 20 to 25 miles per hour. And so, you know, it tends to make it a little bit more of a small ball game. We did a great job of having, at, having excellent at bats, grinding out ABs, fighting off pitches, getting runners on base. We just never really cashed in. We finally had a nice hard hit line drive by Austin Portner to score Carlos Carl. Um, right away, I was, I didn't know if it was going to be uh, in the gap enough for our guy from second to score, but I saw Coach Sage sending in and I was looking back in the first base. Good thing the first baseman dropped the ball and he was able to slide in safe. It's amazing this early in the year to get those kind of games in just to prepare us for what's ahead. Prepare, geez, <laughs> prepare us for what's ahead and uh, prepare us for bigger games in the future. So Roosevelt still hasn't lost on the field and definitely not losing in the uh, post-game interviews as well. Alex Bertram was in Yankton, two of the top teams that aren't in the top five. Washington and Yankton going at it. Bertram strikes out a few in the first and then comes up and gets a triple to help his team. Yes, he's going to motor around all the way to third base. That's an RBI, and they're up 1-0. Yankton would cut the lead 3-2 after a throwing error coming up right here, and you're going to get a little bit of that in the spring. So Yankton right in this ball game, but Alex Bertram helps his own cause once again. Another three-bagger deep into the gap opposite field, and he's going to stretch it for three. He's got to play at third, and he is safe. And they would blow it open from this point. 9-3, Washington gets the win. Nice win for the Warriors. They'd also get a 2-0 win in the nightcap later on. Huron made the trip to Sioux Falls to take on O'Gorman. This is a first game of a doubleheader. Look at that. We've got a broken bat to get things started. That's not how to start things out. Matt Vegan knows how to start it out. Big hit. RBI r drives in a run and they would push their way to a comfortable 13-3 early in this one. And uh, no problems for O'Gorman in the first game of this doubleheader. In game two, though, Huron made a little bit of a comeback. By the way, they got it going a little bit on a throwing error here. This is still first game highlights here with that 13-3 win. But in the second game, Huron gets it going a little bit. Their big hitter in the middle, Ryan Janes, would get an RBI single, puts Huron up early. They had got up 2-0 uh, and drove another one in to go up 3-0. But O'Gorman comes back in a big way. They wouldn't let this upset roll on much longer. Peyton Garbers, he clears the bases coming up here on a triple. Like, actually, this is James with another RBI as they got it up 6-2. to two. Sorry, I made these own highlights myself. You wouldn't think so. But they got up 6-2 early. But then Peyton Garbers with a bases clearing triple. And they own the second half of this game. Got the bats going. Cleared the bases, and I, I love this part. He not only gets the triple onto third base, coming up here. Here we go, he's going into third, the play is close. But then he hits the dirt on third, and he hits the dirt at home, and I think he just hits it from pure exhaustion right here. 
but he gets the 16-6 win. Let's hear from the Knights. It's great to be back out. Um, we had one game earlier this week and now two tonight and two tomorrow. It's just great to be back on the field. I know the guys were getting anxious. I mean, it's been tough to do anything this spring, just let alone even have a practice outside. So it's just nice to get out, just start playing some games and um, see where we can get, uh, get where we want to be here pretty soon. I like seeing us throwing strikes, um, our defense making plays. Um, and right now, I just the only question mark I had was our hitting. And today, we've sh uh, we shown that we can actually do f a few things at the plate, string some innings together, come up with big two out hits, uh, runners in scoring positions, get those big hits to um, put a game out of hand. So a lot of jockeying in the standings right now. O'Gorman has now won three games in a row. They are on fire. Washington gets a couple of wins in Yankton, and Roosevelt comes home still undefeated. Those Sioux Falls teams creeping up into the top five, but there are a lot of contenders. And before this weekend's even over, we're going to see a couple other contenders as Harrisburg takes on Pier and a lot of other teams really get into the meat of their schedule. So we're just getting started here, Kelly, but I'm going to toss it back to you. Oh, my goodness. Don't ever do that. Again, anyways, thank you so much, Jandy. Coming up after the break, we'll keep it on the diamond, but head up to North Dakota, see which teams are setting themselves apart early in the season next.